Hi guys, welcome. In 10 minutes time I'm going to be doing a tutorial showing you all how to make a giant Pacific octopus from polymer clay. See you then. Bye.
Hi guys, welcome. I'm Carly from Carly's Creative Clay. I um, hope everyone's had a good week. I've had an interesting one. I will get on to that in a moment. But let's get out of the way the thing I always do first, which is show some items that are in my shop at the moment. Since I'm going to be making a giant Pacific octopus today, I thought I would dig out some of my marine life bits. So we've got a seal. Hi Fairy the Chalk, hi Arty Arty Life, I hope you've all had a good week. We have a £10 little seal trinket box. That's the lid for it. And it's all in pink swirls. Very cute, I like that one. Let's move that out of the way. Then we're up to a £15 because it's slightly bigger and has two on it, turtles. Again, the same pink swirly clay. I think I did these two both at the same time. It is some of my earlier work. I think I did these in the first year, these two. Then, lastly, a nice large £25 dolphin. Now, bring them up closer. Now, if you're making this yourself, you can either make the dolphin, lay it on its side to bake it, and then attach it to the box but what I actually did to be able to get that arch to stay I put wire through the middle so it's all based around an arch of wire and that's how you're able to get that nice clearance there thank you thank you thank you very much and the inside of that it's all shades of blue swelled up <coughs> right let's get these quickly out the way Oop, I'll put them on the floor behind me it's easier Oop. there we go now last week I made the rabbits so I want to show you how they ended up I redid the black and white rabbit to make it slightly more gray and dark gray but it's all baked up, varnished now, so I will be photographing it and getting it into the shop. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with them, especially the way I got the back legs going on the beige one. And it got toe beans, tiny little toe beans. So that's done. Um, I showed you last week that I was working on a unicorn in a wheelchair that's finished varnished again gonna photograph it up but what I wanted to show you is I've now finished the other two that are in the range so you've got one on crutches like that with some purple glitter going on and thank you thank you um, I've done a walking stick one now this mix isn't one I usually do because you know me and pastels I generally don't go there I don't know if I get it closer can you see it's a green blue pink and yellow very very pal mix up I think it worked out quite well right Pacific octopus now, he's generally red in colour. Um, I went online and got a load of photographs, like I do every week, just so that I've got some idea of what I'm going to sculpt. So this is the picture that I'm going to be working from off my phone. So I've got one showing the eye and the texture. And notice the eye is 
the, the slit is horizontal rather than vertical. Um, I have got that wrong in the past on octopus. So that's a useful thing to bear in mind. And um, the top two are very good at showing me, making sure that I've got all the different bits correct. <coughs> like making sure the funnel's there and things like that. So I've also dug out of my plastic toys a my basic octopus shape so all these are good references for me to start sculpting with thank you all very pretty and perfect for unicorns i love the way the unicorns are standing thank you it's quite tricky to get them to stand and one of the things i've found is when I make quite tall models, you can find that they want to fall over in the oven. Um, what I do is I've got a very big glass cookie jar that I put over the top. So if it does decide to tilt, it's only going to be able to go so far with it. So some of my models look like they're slightly leaning, but they're still stable. And as soon as they go hard, they're fine but it stops me having a complete fall apart in the oven. It's a good security measure if you're baking. Right, normally I don't pre-make for any of this, or if I do, it's a technique that I've used time and time again, like the swirly clay. But on this particular one, there are a couple of bits I did need to pre-do, and I'm gonna show you. What I've got here, is all the suckers now I can't see whether you can you see it properly there's the little white balls and then I got my ball tool let's bring it up close there we are and put a little dot denting it out and I've gone medium down to small and if I end up with any extras of those what I'll end up doing is I'll on a future clay project when I've got a thick bit of clay I'll put my leftovers in the middle and then sculpt the rest so I'm not throwing anything away you can use up scraps of baked bits in interesting ways adding it into the raw the raw clay Hearty, Hearty Hearty says, what a load of balls to roll that Cherry Hedgehog says oh my word so many suckers it is quite a lot but the technique I use when I roll out two balls at once, so I've got one with one hand and one with the other, and I'm doing that, it cuts the time in half because you're doing two at once. When I made octopus before and I could only do one at a time, that really did took, that took a whole day. So I've also made the eyes, and the reason why I've made all these and baked them is because where I'm going to be embedding them and then moving the tentacles around it's going to be very easy to smudge them out of shape or lose them completely so just line them all up on a glass tile <coughs> now I found it hard at first to get a decently you know the glass tiles but they are good to go through the oven what's it called um it's not Pyrex, something like fortified glass or something like that. They wanted a lot of money for clear ones. What I found, I went on to eBay and I looked up um, glass heat coasters, sorry, glass teacup coasters. And the cheapest one had a really ugly design on it. And what I found was it was paper stuck on the underside so I literally was able to get a wire brush and just rub it off really easily or half the time you can do it by soaking it it's really easy just to get off any old dodgy picture and you end up with a really good glass coaster oh thank you I think of you often too um but yeah, keep your eyes open because just because something's got a 
bit of a naff design on it don't mean that you can't strip it back and do your own thing with it so I've done that I mixed up the base but I'm going to be showing you how to make swirly clay but what you find is when you roll out your swirls you end up with this really nice sort of layered effect where the colours almost you're able to see through the top one into the bottom one because it goes quite thin and then I added glitter because holographic glitter needs to be added to most things because that's just my views on life and I've coated the I'm doing a different shape crystal this time um, I coated that already in clay and all I did with that was roll out a round ball of the pattern clay pushed it on the back and then just pushed it down into place and fiddled with it so that it's got a slight lip over the edge so it's holding the stone so I haven't it's not going to fall out or need gluing but you haven't I haven't got such a thick border showing that took me about 20 minutes worth of pinching fiddling pushing it back with my fingers and you get there <clears throat> if you haven't got a if your glass thing hasn't got a silver back like that to it before you mount your glass item into your clay get some tin foil put it on the back of it you don't even need to glue it because the clay will hold it against the back of the crystal is it a crystal if it's made from glass yeah, I suppose so thank you um, the reason for the silver behind it it reflects the light around so much better it really makes it so that you actually get a sparkle whereas if you don't it tends to look quite dark <coughs> I've not mounted this into the clay because I want to make the octopus because I'm not sure if I'm going to have it like this with the octopus behind holding it with its tentacles or to one side like that so let's see how we go with octopus making and then we'll position it all together right so the swirly clay I'm going to be making a similar for the octopus because if you look at it it's different shades of red quite tightly swirled up um, so what I've done is I've got most of the thymos do three different tones they do a burgundy a mid and a true red um, if they don't do the middle one just literally mix your burgundy and your true red together to get a medium and then you stack them roll them out into sausages stack them into a triangle like that yeah then you hold one side still and you roll with the other side to make a twist doesn't matter if they crack or break it will all work out fine now I want to make it a tighter twist so I'm going to keep rolling and if you find like this one end is tighter than the middle you can literally just hold and twist where you need the spiral to go tighter like that don't forget your ends generally don't spiral in very well so you do just need to hold them and twist them in the reason why I say majority hold and roll rather than getting your hands and doing that is very shortly after doing that you're going to get wrist ache whereas that is stable you're not hurting your arms it's it's better for your hand health so I've done the same thing as that with two more because I'm going to need a fair bit of clay and if I have leftover pattern clay it always gets used in other projects so I'm stacking that in a triangle it works either two sticks together or three sticks into a triangle don't try and clump together more than that 
if you've got four do two sets of two and then add the two together okay so stack up into your triangle and then we're going to roll that together like that doesn't matter if it breaks just push it back together just make sure you've got a decent twist going along it all all the way to the end then you're gonna find roughly the half fold it in half like that now when we're at this sort of level of thickness as you roll push slightly inwards because you want to make sure there's not big air pockets forming so now it's a nice big old wedge put it in half now at this stage that's the stage that um, I'd stop at to make that sort of loose swell um, I'll show you the next bit on from it in a second but we're gonna make this an even tighter swell because we're only gonna be because I want that effect so this bit here you wouldn't do if you want a very loose wave like effect but we're going to just bring it back out into a stick now you don't want to go too thin because you're not trying to blend the colors to make a new color you're trying to make three colors that are swirly got a hair on there i got a haircut yesterday so i've got to be vigilant that i'm not getting any hairs i washed it but i still seem to molt after a haircut right holding one side and i'm pushing it to spiral this back up like that get some decent tight spiraling going on all the way to the ends because i found if i didn't i've missed out doing this with the ends and you end up with these big splodges of colour if that's what you want mixed in with the swell then don't worry so much about the ends but I think it looks a bit odd right bring it back on itself and do the same process swirl in it in half at this stage pushing on it so that it becomes more of a thick ball right i'm going to quickly roll it so that i can get rid of all those joining lines now you can just use it like this and roll it out and you get these nice line effect but what i'm wanting is the pattern that's on the inside which I'll just show you so I'm going to just push it into a rec rectangle cube cube I found if you do the mix the stick into a large ball once you get camouflage prints a large sort of block splodges twice is what I'm about to show you and we may end up going to free after free if you try and do it a fourth time the clay just blends too much and you end up with a new color and no design on it so if you cut the outsides off is this a tight enough swell I might go even tighter and show you what it's like doing it for the third time if you cut the outsides off you can see there is that swell I find that a much prettier look than that I think I'm gonna go for even tighter swells than that so if you were going to use it at stage two you cut all the outside off and I'll show you what to do but I'm gonna take it back again yeah I use swirling clay so much now <coughs> I find I only take it through to a third round on things like hair for when I want a very very tight swell so I'll show you that 
quickly make it up so you can see the colors are a little bit more blended together so it is always more of a risk doing it a third time but i like the effect and i'll give you a look right there we go quickly through i hope you've all had a good week it's been lovely weather in the uk bit of rain but when i really quite like rain i know that there are those out there that don't there we go it's it's really quick to bring it through the twist and into a ball once you've done it a few times you can really do it quite fast right let's get rid of these join lines and then i'll show you this is how i'm going to use it so again if you wanted to use it with the lines there's now a lot tighter lines and I have done on some of the bases not cut the outside and just used it liney like that but that's not what I'm aiming for you don't need to get rid of all the creases you just got to um, roll it out enough so that when you cut the outside off it doesn't all fall apart so we're back into a rough cube let's take the outside there we go right can you see it's very very faint so you can see if I did that another time it would just vanish and turn into a medium red that's what I'm looking for for this this design so cut off all the outside and whichever one you go for the once through twice or three times at the end of them all you do this same stage you cut the outsides all off and they're not wasted it is and it works far better i think for the octopus's look what we're going to do the side with the line on it you put it facing your clay block and then you put these bits back on so that all the clay looks like the inside so it's all reusable and you really won't find those join those that liney bit of clay again once you rolled it smoothed it all out i've never once cut into a clay block and found that original patterning anywhere so and i've been doing this for years so if it was going to happen it would have happened at least once to me but no so roughly sticking it all back on so you all your clay is now uniform with that design all the way through it most of the methods i use i work out myself Hey. You've only missed me making up swirly clay, which you've seen me do about a billion times. So you probably could do it in your sleep. Right, that's it all smoothed back out. So this is what we're going to be working on. And wherever you cut through that, you're going to get that nice, subtle swirling. So. that's all right it's lovely to have you so next stage i'm gonna put that to one side and we're gonna work on making the main body structure it is it's it's so tempting just to make lots of balls like this put them into egg shapes i do sell eggs with this swirly pattern on they're not in my shop at the moment i need to re-put them back in because I've, I've got them, but it was a technical issue. Right, now, if you look, we're not going for a complete ball. It's more of a teardrop shape, that whole head. So that's what you're aiming to make up. 
And this the reason why I'm using foil is because it's going to be very it's going to be a very thick piece and you don't want to end up with soft clay in the middle foil is a far more stable center to your thick clay work and it's cheaper than polymer clay so all in all it's worth doing foil work and if you don't want to say I've got foil in the middle of my piece you can say I've got a metal armature right that looks roughly the right sort of shape don't you think so that's the head like that now we're going to add all that bump now because we've already because we've done the eyes i think this might be slightly too big so make sure that you're making it the right kind of size for the suckers and the eyes that you've made you can always compact down a bit more and you can always take a hammer to it and hammer it into an even tighter form if you need to but i don't think we're gonna i'm just gonna use the glass to help me squid it down make it a little smaller so it fits there we go that's what i'm looking for right now sip a drink i cover it in masking tape because if you don't you run the risk of any little points sticking through the clay and showing and it looks really scruffy and where it's silver it's really really noticeable so again you don't need to be neat and you can have weirdly enough you can have sticking up bits of masking tape and it doesn't ever show through the clay so i just give it a quick rub like that there we go do you see what i mean i think because it's paper it's more flexible once the clay goes on so we're at that stage now put this out of the way I'm gonna just cover that in some red so make sure you're leaving enough you need it to leave enough for all the legs and the rest of the head so really you don't want to take a lot off your ball of clay now i'm gonna roll it out a bit flat and then release it from the board with my tissue blade whilst it's still thick you can just pick it back up but once you've got it a bit thinner now i never go too thin with my clay i find it really difficult to work and it's far easier to get a break in it once it's baked if you go too thin but experience will get you to a point where you're used to it now the rolled outside it loosens the swell a bit the other side the side that is close to the board even though it looks a bit more scruffy it's still got the tighter swell than the side you rolled on so on this i'm going to use that the tighter one now when you cover try not to trap air bubbles they don't explode your clay like if it was ceramics when you kiln fire with air bubbles it dramatically explodes this it just gives it a weak point so you, it's got more chance of breaking in the future and if you find you've not got enough clay to fill the area you can always just cut off another bit because you're going to roll it all out smooth anyway but it's worth having a fiddle and taking your time at this point to not trap air and if you do get your pin tool on it and just 
poke it and then smooth it back in. So that's already covered. So let's get rid of all these lines. Get its shape looking like you want it to. So Now I haven't got to worry so much about the bottom because we're going to do a mantle and legs and that sort of stuff. I have a deep love for octopus. Although they have a very short life, they all die after mating and breeding. The males go a bit nuts and the females um, stop eating. They just stay with the eggs, aerating them, and they die at the point of hatching. It sounds all very sad. Harry Hedgehog says, does it matter if there is air between the clay and the muscular tape? Um, it's not going to create a, a massive break it's not as important with polymer clay but you want to try and get air out if it's there if you spot it use a pin puncture a hole push the air out and then just smooth it back over um, it just means that that bit of um, clay is thinner than the rest because there's a pocket of air so it's more likely to be a weaker point but yes it sounds very very sad that they tend to die off but what it does is it gives the next generation no competition for food which actually is a really sensible evolutionary strategy so we got the body now we're gonna do the legs so we've got to divide this into eight now you can either cut them into eight balls make the sticks and join them back on or you can go around and just divide the sides like that so we're going to do it into four so you've got four bits octopus have eight legs now let's do this I know I've left two with slightly more they do tend to have some legs longer than the other and you can always pinch them back over at a later point what you need to do is what might actually be easier is if I take the that bit out divide one of them up see this usually I do separate legs but I want to do it this way this time around just to give myself some extra challenge on screen because you can now what I'm gonna do is I'm pushing it flat and just rolling up here just a lot in the clay for a leg out a bit we'll form that into a decent shape at a later point once we've got the rest of it all secured so it's always worth doing the scruffy bit first and then finessing rather than spending a lot of time making one leg perfect and the rest of them are all still stuck together there we are that's three four five six i have lost legs one of these needs to go into two there we go and that's why it's useful to have some over because i can't count to eight apparently Oh well, it's all good. Seven. I'll divide a leg. One of those days today, apparently I can't count. Which is interesting, but you think that would be a mess and it's not. So I'm going to take a bit of this a lot that over sideways like that then take 
a little bit off one side here like that a little bit off one side there put them together there you go now on eight and it looks scruffy i know but we'll get this looking absolutely beautiful but it's good to see that mistakes are so easy to actually change up and make look right just gonna bring them out smooth out that bit of surgery that I did there we go see that one that was two it's now back at one I think on people it's harder I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't risk it I've been watching a series on TV called the repair shop and they're working on bits with real historical significance and even that I'm like nope one wrong move you can't just chuck it away this is like real historically important you're already a great clay surgeon thank you thank you very much you're really sweet but clay is one of the easiest things to work with I think you're far more you have a harder job working with paint and I know you've um, got paint to completely yield to your wishes it does not behave for me so I'm going to just bring out this middle so we've got a nice large mantle that I can start to smooth in Charlie Star says oh is that like a restoration program yeah it's really good <clears throat> what they've done is they brought together experts in all sorts of restorations and people bring their old sentimental heirlooms that look absolutely knackered and they all collaborate together to bring it back and it's it's really fun it's brought a lot of conversation into our household Party Heart it Life says I disagree clay won't do what I want really and then charlie star says clay never does what i want to either i'm amazed it's so well behaved you need to come over and do more clay sessions with me so i can see what it looks like when it doesn't behave for someone and get it so that it behaves for you so i'm just bringing these out into longer legs and we're going to sort out the scruffy underside in a minute watch your blade you don't want to cut yourself on it so they're coming out into points like this i'm just going to smooth that through see how it looks like i didn't do a complete train wreck at the start it's awesome when that happens it almost looks like i got it right first time let's bring that back in I've got too much leg there so if you've got too much clay in one bit you can always just you push back into the main lump that's a trick I used to do that a lot when I first started because you're so focused on what one hand is doing you forget that you're holding with the other one and the more you concentrate the more you grip because you're focused and you look down and you've just smudged all the work that you just did. Charlie Star says, I think I'd be happier using a baby dog clay and paint it with an acrylic once I'm done. As soon as I add different colours, it all goes very wrong. And the Party Heart of Life says, yes. That is something I've heard from others. You're not alone. I'm just going to get a ball tool because it's easier than trying to get my finger in there just to start to smooth over that crack and it looks all scruffy um, practice with one colour and work up to adding more colours I find once I really really practiced making sure that whilst I'm making if I'm holding something every 
sort of minute or so I will just quickly put my attention over to the holding hand and make sure I'm not smudging anything and if you can't do it if you can't hold it without smudging it you can always bake it and then add more raw clay and carry on right almost there one little corner this side yeah what I was going to tell you we had an ant's nest set up right next to our living room and no matter the fact that we were really clean and got it all looking lovely in there they wouldn't go away so we got in an exterminator because we've got cats we can't use the generic poison you get from the shops and we were doing every online trick and tip on how to do it kindly and all that stuff and they just weren't getting the hint so we got this guy out and apart from being the happiest person i met all week i mean he everything was up on this pitch it was really really happy um nice guy but i asked him a few of the old wives tales i've heard on things like putting coffee grains down and things like that and he went through the ones that were yes and the ones that were actually not a thing and so much of it was nope that don't work that don't work but one that i've grew up hearing and i weren't sure whether it was not true or not and it turns out it's actually definitely true and i thought i'd pass it on to you all in London, which is where I grew up, the insect that we get a lot of problems with is cockroaches. A lot of the markets and all that have real issues with it. My dad always said to me, whatever you do, if you see a cockroach, don't step on it. Don't want them back in our house. It turns out what that's about, the females carry their young around in a compartment in their back and the young are very, very small and very, very good grippers. So what happens if you step on one, they end up on the underside of your shoe and you track the whole lot of babies into your house. And that's how a lot of cockroach infestations happen. So if you see a cockroach, don't step on it. It's the worst thing you can do. Pick it up, put it out of your, the area that you don't want it in that's far more you're more likely to end up happier in the long run Charlie Star says then I get so annoyed that I ruin it um, stop because of the headache it gives me and end up never going back to it unfortunately I'm very good at doing that too yeah and then Arty Arty Life says to your um, cockroach story oh my god I know right it's a clever little trick of theirs but it's um not helpful but yeah it's it's hard to, when you fight with um wanting to be perfect when literally nothing i make is perfect perfect is um a very difficult thing to achieve and what i've found is most people looking at it that aren't the artist do not notice any of the things that are screaming at you so I suppose experience, what comes with experience is knowing which mistakes look natural and bring character and which mistakes make it look rough. And you'll be surprised. Most of them you can get away with fine. Now, what they've got, I know it doesn't show it very well in this model, but it does in the pictures. They've got some skin between each of the legs that is kind of thin can you bring up the picture so i can show them can you see on the bottom right hand corner the one with its legs out that it's got quite thin skin so we're gonna just using a ball tool or you can use your fingers to get in there or something with a more triangular shape anything really and you just want to just start to smudge down just in that corner and that will help firstly it will help smooth out the joints between the legs 
and it will help give that look like that that's what I'm going to do round them all and when I get to a point you can either do it on a towel or move it round but I like to make sure that I just keep freeing it up with my blade so I can keep a look at what I'm doing underneath and I'm not causing any trouble I get that in my painting workshops we take care not to body shame our creations As I'm sure it comes from GCSE art where they've got to give you grades for everything for every work, every person that hates your work there's someone that's going to love it and that's the case for all work all artwork so it's really hard to say this one is right and this one is wrong because what you're saying is it's not to my taste that's all you can say you can't say it's wrong or right because there is literally a pile of bricks in the Tate Art Gallery and to me I'm a builder's daughter I've grew up did I know I was growing up with art every day of my life nope it's a complex subject so yeah I'm smudging down in those gaps and just bringing the legs into a nice sort of point at the top like that right the other thing I saw over the week that I took note to tell you all about you know when people end up in hospital and they've got all these monitors on and it looks really really dramatic well they're looking into a bit of technology where they can replace all of that with a wireless sort of radar box that is kept in the room so it does all the same monitoring as all these masses of equipment but it's not no wires to be pulled out no it, it looks better it you know less to go wrong that sort of thing oh is there really yeah no accounting for these things right but i think that would be brilliant if they're able to get rid of that because it it does look shocking my mum was hooked up to that sort of stuff a lot in my childhood and it it if you're not prepared when you go into a hospital to see that level of machinery it can be very very surprising i know right so it still looks kind of scruffy but you can see we've now got legs and the thin I was way off there sorry right you see just out of that fiddling we've now got that so next thing to do we're gonna attach this you can just push it in but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little bit of wire I know. It it's I know when you've got someone who's a family member in ICU, that's when everyone wants to visit you. I mean truly that whole thing about you've got family members that come out for weddings and funerals and ICU visits should be in there as well. But only if you've got a good family unfortunately that looks cool already you never know how it started how it did amazing yeah see what i mean so with that level of scruff here it's easy to look at it and go oh i got those legs all completely wrong i'm going to need to completely start again you really don't half the time the more you fiddle with it it comes back so i put a bit of wire in it's not going all the way through but even if it does because we're going to mount it on a base the very bottom we're not going to see so 
you can either push it in like that and put it in where you want right let's bring it tilt it back a bit because this one that's what happens with octopus so we are now at that stage what I'm going to do just because I'm finicky about it that joining line I'm just going to use a tool and just quickly come round and just smooth it in so I'll do half of it and let me show you the difference right that side there along there compared with that even though it looks kind of liney you get your fingers and just smooth it out but it looks more like the actual animals one piece rather than it looks a bit odd with a join line I find so I just go around and quickly take them out and before I had ball tools I used to just use my finger the back of a knitting needle anything that can get into that gap just bring out that odd little line there we go that's all perfect make sure your legs are going up to the side there we go that's what we want right pick you up let's show you off so like that and I'm just gonna smudge that in a bit more there there we are see it's actually a lot smoother so we're gonna need to do the eyes next now bit of excess clay now let me bring up that picture because I want to see whether I should do the little um, what are they called funnels before the eyes yes funnels go further back now what I've got for the underside is some it's white with a very tiny bit of red added in because if you look on the pictures it's the suckers are pretty much white but the back of it has more red in it so we're going to do the funnels what you need to do now this is a bit interesting because we're going to put white in the middle of it so a little bit of red clay like that they have one either side so two balls roughly the same size like this there we go then you're gonna get a needle tool or a small ball tool or something you're gonna make a hole in the middle straight through and we're gonna widen that hole right out like that do the same on the other one this isn't looking like a funnel Carly no I know we're not even making the funnel yet this is getting the line into the funnel so tiny pinch of the inside color don't know if you guys can see where I'm going with this so tiny little ball each and then what you can do so you're going to get the donut you just made you're going to get the ball and you're going to push the ball into the middle sorry into the middle like that it's sorry. kind of like a stuffed olive that one took me about a couple of hours but i had to take lots of breaks so you're going to again same with the other side st stuff your white clay into the middle then we are going to bring it up into that sort of cone shape cone not cone what's it called like a rectangle but made out of circle cylinder that's it You're too far back. sorry i'm too far you back up, you have to be dead center. like that now I know it looks like one end 
has gone scruffy if that happens you just can literally get some red clay take a pinch cover up where you don't want the white to show like that Joe, and smooth it back in maybe I'll try a squid instead. this it works out pretty well so again bring this one up into that cylinder just by rolling on the sides and just pushing so that you got that sort of shape there you go now two like that I'm going to take off the top and well don't need the bottom because the bottom's going to join in but I'm just going to take off the top so it looks smart like that so you've now got can you see you've got a dot of white going all the way through the red then get the blade out of the way make sure you keep your blade facing away from you put that away from this clay you're, you're going to need this for the eyes and you don't want to get that paleness on it what we're going to do now get a needle tool where's my needle tool that one you're going to go through the center of that white dot i'm gonna have i know it's not obvious for you to have a look at but i need to see what i'm doing like that and then you're gonna just wiggle it and bring it out can you see all along the inside now has a white coating to a red tube which if you looked if you look at the funnel that's what it looks like white scent the light color with the dark outside so again through the middle wiggle 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 just to expand it out there we go now let's get the positioning they are down at the base slightly further back than the eyes and they face out sideways it doesn't matter so much about positioning because they can move them depending on which direction they want to jet and what they do with these is they take in water and then they push it out through these funnels and it propels them along so there's a there's the two and i'm just using my ball tool to make sure they stick fine and going to use the smaller one to make sure that i've got them open and facing how i want them to like this now on the underside i better put these um put the pal color on so what i'm going to do small bit for each of the eight legs the other thing for the other reason why i went to add the red in to make it pink is because red is one of these colors that really really cling to your hands so it's if you go from red to white you're gonna mark your clay this way it just it doesn't notice as much where are we four five six seven eight like that now this is what i was talking about dual wielding clay like that two together end up with two balls far quicker there we go like that and what we're going to do is we're just going to stick these bring them out to the same size as the legs and put them underneath because the underside is paler than the top side of an octopus and it's going to be easier to do that before i put the eyes on now if you want you can do this before you put the head or anything on just when it's at that sort of star shape 
but I find that I squash it down too much when I do that. So I'm bringing this out. You want it to be thinner than the leg Charlie's and the right size. Very clever. I hate using white. Why? Because it never stays white. Oh no, you need a women hazmat suit for white. So just roughly the same sort of line, same sort of thickness. I'm not going to worry so much about that underside. What I'm going to do is put it on this side. Just support it like this and lay it in like that. There we go. So smudge that in. That's one on. Repeat seven more times. <sighs> Hairs everywhere. It must be so easy if you're a bald person or one of those ones that, you know the guys who don't grow any body hair at all? They would make great clayers. Their life would be so much easier. Us with hair have border trouble. There we go. Bring it down. Smudge it in. Now, don't forget you've got a slightly pointed back so you're not pushing on the flat of your fingers you're going to hold that point and push it in like that there we go <clears throat> whilst I'm doing this um, next thing to tell you that I looked up there is something that I am extremely happy about a German circus decided to get rid of all the animals and use holographic animals instead and they're reporting having more people coming to see it than when they actually had the real thing which is exactly what I want to hear really is because there is no reason to put an animal in a circus it's it's not good especially things like elephants the whole thing is awful and if you look at the images you can see it online they've done some really really good holographic elephants they really look pretty lifelike huge amount of detail in them it's, they're really pretty i would go to that it looks awesome and hopefully the fact that they're able to say well apart from animal rights the finances show you should be doing this that is quite a yeah I know right so you still got all the acrobatics and all that but you know Cirque du Soleil can only take you so far this added element gives a nod to the old days and makes it really interesting and they're actual life-sized full elephants I think they've got bears and all sorts it's awesome if they come over to the UK I'm so there because it looks great and I'm hoping that's the way circuses go they're holographic shows rather than anything else that would make me a very happy person. Right, two more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just doubting myself. But no, there's definitely eight legs there. Right. Right there. Charlie Star says, wow, that sounds awesome. I'd go see that. I really do hate live animals and circus acts. Ooh, animatronics in the circus would be pretty cool too, especially where robotics are going. It it will, but it's more limited than what you can do with holograms. And you've got a higher maintenance cost with animatronics than you would with a holographic system. Arty Arty Life says, mind you, technology had to reach this point for that to work. Imagine 20 years ago huge great puppet animals wouldn't be such a draw yeah they didn't understand about 
the psychology, the intelligence levels and awareness levels. I mean, back in the day, things have progressed. We've headed in the right direction. And that's really all you can ask for, is that your kids do it slightly better than you did. Then we're evolving as a species, you know. Awesome. Right, I've got the legs on. So I'm just going to do a round flat bit for underside. I'm not going to bother putting a beak on this octopus because I plan to have it upright but with its legs curving back so you won't get to see underneath fully. Yeah, that looks about right. Just very true but animatronic would be cool too yeah holographic stuff though the possibilities are endless to it is you can have a dragon all going around Arty -arty says, modern animatronics would be cool for sure that reminds me of um you know the dinosaur animatronics they were doing yeah they were doing the walking with dinosaurs anim animatronic um show and that was meant to be absolutely awesome Ch uh, charlie star says Ooh, holographic dragons I know, can you imagine if they had a full huge dragon flying over whilst people did trapeze artists? Right, so we've got the nice bits of white showing through. Now, let's get some legs, some suckers on these things because I think it's going to be easier to put the suckers on at this point. Now, watch, you're not going to taint it with all that red clay. It was all right whilst I was um freeing it up oops sorry with the same color but i'm about to tr it's now got a paler base so i need to make sure i clean my blade down be careful with your tissue blades people i know from this angle it looks like the the um you've got quite a mess you might want to wipe yes it. that's the next thing but you need i'm gonna wipe down but i'm just getting it out the way first because you don't want kitchen roll stuck to your work because trust me it's annoying to pick off there we go it's free put you to one side and look at your board make sure you give it a good wipe down red is such a bad color for getting everywhere pervasive, pervasive that's a good word yes it is pervasive right so for the suckers, again put it up on its side, we're going to go, they go into lines of two, so next to each other, helps if I don't drop them. You can use tweezers, you can also use those nice little tools that pick up gems, but I'm using my hands because I'm a glutton for punishment apparently just push them in like that <laughs> it is what you can do let's see if I got it you can get these things they're like they're pens that you put it's almost like a, a wax in the top i can't remember what it's called but you can use that to pick up little bits like that and it holds it and you can use that to push them in and i got this with a set of it was it how to make like a crystal picture but you need to make sure you free it up off your towel before you put them in now i'm not going to do all eight legs because you guys will literally want to go to sleep. But you will find just the stickiness of clay on your hands will pick them up pretty w easily. There we go. Like this. Right. Other interesting news. They have now used a drone in America to deliver 
a kidney for transplant. They just flew it on over. It was between hospitals. The donor was in one. The person receiving it was quite a way away. So they just, just flew it. I think they had to make the drone themselves. So it kept everything at a decent temperature and that sort of thing. But it worked. That will be when I start mutilating those tentacles. Yes, when you're Very focusing on the bits that you're dropping rather than how you're holding it. Very hedgehogs is cool use of a drone. I know, right? The UK is getting either is getting or has got a um ombudsman for drones now. Is it an ombudsman? ombudsman. Someone who um a politician whose job is to work out policies because um someone kept flying drones over Heathrow and grounding all the planes and they couldn't work out who it was and we've really not got a lot of um, decent laws for drones in this country and they decided that actually that's not a good idea we need to get there with it so that's can we bring the brightness down so I can show off the leg that I've just yeah, done cool. brilliant yes, thank you right can you see and this is why i pre-baked because trying to push those in if you didn't pre-bake you'd put the dots of clay and then use your ball tool to put the holes in afterwards but i'm going to do that on the other seven at a later point at this stage pick where your front's going to be so i'm going to do that I have got to fiddle some of these lines of um, look a bit cracked and marked. There we go. That looks better. I use my ball tools for everything. There's two sets. There's the brown handled, very fine ones. And then there's the larger and they go right up to quite a big, let's see. I don't use my big one very often. I think it's right over in the back here somewhere. I have cups and cups of tools. And then I've got the tool cup with the ones that I use the most. So yeah, it, they really do come up in size. But they're an awesome one to get. You can get them off everywhere. eBay, Etsy, Amazon arts and crafts shops right so remember guys pupils that way so that way not that way yeah so flat and we're gonna place them slightly higher up there we go like that let's see Let's get me, yeah, that'll do it. Bring that back like that and make sure that they're level. There we are, right. So I've done that. Then I'm gonna get the leftover red, pull off a couple of small bits and we're gonna do that big eyebrow ridge now bring it back so what you're going to do is you're going to form it into a sausage shape that is the height of the eyes and taper at the corners on each side so like that yep goes down so little sausages where they it goes into points now I'm gonna do another one like that bring them out again into a point that's not that even there we go that's better I do love a glass chopping board to work from I've tried so many other surfaces and 
it's just not as good as glass. <sighs> Brought them out too long. That would do it. All the fiddling. But that's part and parcel of clay work. Now, you can add clay and make it so that the eyebrow lumps so that this goes back and there's more of a lump there but I don't want to actually do that I want to make it more upright like this but I am because it looks very much like just a frowny face I'm gonna blend those in using a ball tool you won't find one with a handle like this this was one of these wooden ones like that that broke because I use it that much so I just covered it in clay and still use it so I'm just going to smudge in the join lines on that ridge like that and then down that side here we are I know it's hard for you to see I will show it to the camera Uh, I've got to see what I'm doing or it definitely won't work because I'm good but I'm not good enough to do it without seeing what I'm doing right. kind of like that I'm gonna go over actually and smooth out that I think there we go look see so whoops down a bit so you've got more of that eyebrow ridge you can also come along and just smooth that along and just make it fiddle with it until you've got it how you want but that's the main of the octopus now bar a bit of fiddling and smoothing in and schmoozing once I put the legs on not the legs the suckers on it all what I'm gonna then do with it is you get your base clay you get your stone and go right do I want these legs just to come up and bring you up like that I'm going to you twiddle around Charlie Star says he looks so good Connie. thank you now let's do some leg finessing because you will find that if you um, get your tentacles in a position that you want that you will actually have to put less suckers on because if it's touching the base you won't see it but what I will be doing is doing some little twists like that so he will go on like that then this will go in like that and then I will probably use these to hold it in place like that just make these the tentacles look more like they're sticking up like that there we go so the stone falls between the eyes you've got legs going on if you want if you want to do the texturing of the mantle is it the mantle the main head pit you know it's got that that ridges here bring the picture up a second see the middle one to the left the sort of ridged lines you already have it in the colored swirly clay but you can just get your needle tool and come along and just do some stipples in it let's do a little patch because this is what I'm gonna do just stipple 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 and where it's in place you won't smudge it so can you see how it then with the swirling of the color you've also got a texture going on 
and that will just finish it off yeah you can also you can do longer streets it's down to you what you want to do it's personal taste but I tend to texture up the top it's gonna take me a little while to go around and just put all those suckers on which I will do pretty easily even with them all twisted up you can do that still but yeah <clears throat> one octopus I think he will look grand so next week I will have him finished baked and varnished and I'll show you the finished results but you gotta love an octopus and I really do I'm gonna head off I hope you all have a wonderful week and that the weather stays awesome for you all and I will see you again oh I might not see you this Wednesday let me double check on my calendar one of yes next Wednesday I have a medical appointment and it's at 4.50 on a Wednesday and I phoned to try and change it and apparently the doctor only does Wednesdays afternoons I'm like what thank you thank you so much it's so lovely to have you all um, I won't be here next Wednesday if I fill up to it next Thursday I might but it may be the week after but definitely 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 on the Wednesday the 19th I will be back with you but Wednesday the 12th I'm gonna not be okay so everyone have an awesome week and I will see you at latest in a fortnight big hugs bye